Hello folks, welcome to World Cup Stories, I am the Custard Prophet and we're back with another World Cup Story. This is part one of our trek into the unknown with Canada at the World Cup in Qatar. Whatever happens, we are going to do better than Canada to have done ever before because this is their first time qualifying for the World Cup. That's right, folks. We are managing Canada. Hopefully, we can do a little better than we did with Tunisia the last time out. The important thing to remember is our restriction, and that is this. So, our restriction was three at the back. We have to play with three at the back. Uh, previously, the restriction for Tunisia was we could only play with players who are um, six foot or less, which was a bugger. These guys would not have been able to play. So, we have set up our formation like this. We'll go through a couple of the key players as well, but we're going to be playing three at the back with a couple of wing backs and then um, uh, three uh, midfielders doing the grunt work with a, a couple of decent strikers up top. Uh, one shadow striker just behind a pressing forward. And hopefully that is going to be able to do the, the business. The key thing here, as Old Lady Plays point out, is that whilst Canada do have some good players, those aren't necessarily represented in centre-back positions and what we have are three fairly ordinary players who are, are fairly physical they've got a bit of height amongst them but technically they're not that adept they aren't going to be able to pass their way out of a problem so the way we're going to try and make them deal with that is keep relatively close together and um Get, keep the attacks outside and hopefully win all the headers as they as they come in. Obviously, we've got to play some of the best players in the world, so that's not necessarily going to be easy. We are going to try and keep things uh, out wide, and we're going to try and hit teams on the counter-attack. We'll see how that works. Key to all this is using the width, using the overlap, um, because we've got nothing else to use here. And... Um, uh, pass the ball into space so get those wide players get the ball into those wide players because those are probably certainly on the left side our best players in the team thinking about who's our best players in the team let's go and look at our key men so whilst Canada aren't necessarily blessed with the greatest set of players in the world they do have this superstar Alf Alfonso Davis who plays for Bayern Munich and he is a world-class left back um, so we really need to make the most of him. He needs to be an active part of all games. He would get into most sides, you would think. Um, very, very good player. It's not just a one-horse team. We do have the likes of Jonathan David, who is, um, was he at Lille? Um, he is going to be playing probably in that number 10 role or the, uh, the attacking midfielder role, shadow striker role, just behind the striker going to provide some um, support there another very good young player who will get better and better and better you'd hope the player who is likely going to be leading the line for us is Vancouver um, based Canadian international Lucas Cavallini who has just been around North and South America in fact I think he's just been around North America I think he's gone as far as Mexico he's a 29 year old but he's a very very solid player what he doesn't really have is the best in terms of finishing or first touch ability so hopefully playing as a pressing forward will mean that he'll just get people into the game and use some of his aggression bravery sort of strength physicality um, to potentially get David into the uh, into the match there's some decent central midfielders and this guy is probably the pick of the bunch Stephen Estaquiquo who is at Porto. I'm not sure how Canadian this guy actually is, but um, we're glad to have him. And yeah, he does have a lot of good things going for him when looking through his his attributes. There's very little that you would say is a weak point, other than the fact he is not particularly strong or tall. Um, but other than that, he's he's pretty good, and he's I think he's going to be a, a creative influence in the middle of the pitch. 
as you can see this is what the team looks like so it's not as bad as you might think we've got a, I think a very very good midfield um, area and, and up top in terms of backup that's where it all gets a little bit worrisome we don't have any particular superstar backups um, to, to come in so when people are getting tired then we, we're not going to have people to come on and really make a difference which is which is a little bit of a worry there are a few older players in here I mean for example we Atiba Hutchinson who I'm not sure if we'll be starting is 39 he's almost got 100 caps for Canada but um, his mental attributes really are very very good physically he's 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 losing all that ability now um, he's, he's got high natural fitness which is a guess why he's kept his attributes so high for so long uh, but he isn't going to play full games is he he might be someone to just bring on in matches uh, so uh, perhaps this is going to be his start maybe and then he'll, he'll be a substitute from here on in so our world cup group is uh, it's a tough one but it's not completely unmanageable we have morocco who are the weakest team in the group other than us i think they are probably ranked higher than us yes 20th in the world other teams we've got to play croatia which is our first match uh they're i think something like 13th in the world and belgium who are one of the best teams with a huge amount of talent so it's going to be tough we do have a, a couple of very good players but strength in depth we don't have and a lot of these teams do let's see how things go so let's see how we've got on in our friendly just before uh, the match we played one of the greatest teams in the world Liechtenstein, <laughs> and yes we deserve to win but you can see here we did concede uh, two goals now we had a this is not the formation that i wanted them to play they they went for this kind of very basic 442 formation because I was not involved in this but conceding two goals is a worry so I'm hoping three at the back may be better for us you can see um, actually it was mainly one chance that Liechtenstein had that created all of those well the two chances the good chances they had they scored all of them but we looked pretty strong in front of goal Cavan Cav Cavallini and David working well together as a two well how are they going to work together um, in the positions we put them in we can always tweak it to that as well let's not forget that right then let's go forward and play the game against croatia folks wish us luck well before we get into the uh, the match one little um one of the other matches i wanted to share with you is this one mexico against argentina mexico dominating the match against argentina they did get both teams getting a player sent off there was two good this still had goals at the end there for argentina but a Raul Jimenez Mexican goal won it for them. What a great start for Mexico at this World Cup. Well, here we go then. Let's go and play Croatia. Right, no idea how this is going to go, whether this formation will be completely the worst thing in the world or whether it's going to work a little bit. Um, obviously, we didn't play against Liechtenstein. I thought we had, but we'll see how how badly we do against Croatia hopefully we can limit their chances and just maybe score one or two uh, or get one or two chances ourselves and maybe take one of those well didn't actually see the shot but we had a free kick there that's pretty good we look at the possession we have as well 67 percent at the minute take it although uh, lost the ball there Cornelius just playing it back Esquisito that is an exquisito pass, David. It's, oh, it's just wide. Livakovic, did he make the save? He did. What a great start from Canada. You've got to love this. Exquisito. That's why he's never all Over the top here. It's cleared. And unfortunately, Luka Modric is running after us with his 300-year-old legs. But yeah, he's passed it to Kramaric. He's going to play it inside Zanita Modric. And that is that was a shot. Why are we seeing that? First chance really for Croatia, and they just put it wide. Kramaric with a bending free kick. But this is the end of the first half, and well, we've limited Croatia's chances. We've had probably the best chance of all ourselves. Um, not seen much yeah, towards the end of the second half, but you've got to say 
it's not been bad. It's not been bad at all. Injury to striker David is something we're going to have to worry about. But can we get through this and... Uh, well, maybe we do this. Maybe we play Cavani alongside that. I think we have to make a change here. Who can we bring on? I think Ugbo is the option. I think he would play quite well as a defensive, a, a deep line forward. He likes to be a pressing forward. That's a similar sort of role as far as I remember. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll put him as a pressing forward, but on attack. How about that? We've got very few attacking players. Let's, uh, let's do that. We might have to up the number of attacking players, I think, in the second half if we are going to want to create stuff. Well, Modric stands over the ball. Obviously, he's a wizard with the free kick. And he plays that one, which is an interesting one. Here he's back again. And it's over the top. Well done. Still not seeing much since that start, which was a very, very strong start from us. Not seen an awful lot from the Canadians. It's just gone wide again, but a draw is fine. We're gonna we're gonna pull back to uh, defensive, I think. After watching Loki's video, if you haven't watched it, go and watch it. He changes what it means to play very defensive football. Well, what's happening here? Hutchinson's got it. There's a bit of an overlap on that side. He did dallied on it, and Modric is through. And it's a terrible bit of play straight into the goalkeeper, Borjan. I'm going to make a, a couple of changes, I think. We're starting to tire a little bit. I think Asario is definitely one man he wants to come on for 37-year-old Hutchinson. 39-year-old. <laughs> Doing him a disservice. The back line is, is looking very, very strong. Do we look to change the, the right side? Alistair Johnson also coming on. Kay has it now. Running down the wing. Long ball, but into Perisic. No one picks it up for the Canadians. Good God, it's just <laughs> lump ball. Lovely tackle. No, 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 no. 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 VAR? No. That was not a penalty. You got the ball. What? <laughs> no. Oh, that's... Come on, goalkeeper. I bet it's Modric, isn't it? Just... No. Oh, the goalkeeper was moving in the right direction. Got there and... Oh, right, are we going to have to go... Gonna to have to go positive. Well, defender Kamal Miller is coming on for Vittoria at, uh, on the left side of the central central defence. We're gonna go a little bit more attacking. We we'll picked the ball up here, but again, we're really struggling to have the strength and presence of mind just to hold the ball up when we need to. And I think goalkeeper-wise, Bourjan has done an excellent job in goal. The, the chances that he's had to save, he's He's done a good job. Corner comes in. We've just changed the front line around a little bit again. Just trying to get a little bit better out of them. Cavallini's up front on his own on attack now. Another ball in here. This time Modric. It's over the top. They've, I mean, we've limited them to average chances, but they've had a lot of average chances, which isn't great. Forcing them to try and get most of these chances from free kick or whatever. It's not been a lot where they've got inside the box that just flies over the bar <laughs> well one nil loss on on one hand we started amazingly and just didn't start playing again until way in the second half uh, after the goal went in but obviously they got a penalty and that's the only one the only shot I think decent shot they had from within the box and it was one other chance where it was just a poor finish but it's not a bad performance really I mean 26 shots given up which isn't great seven on target goalkeeper played well to 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 keep that out we we had five shots ourselves um, 
and a 0.77 xg so we sh we we could well have got something out of that game if we'd have if if we have um converted one of the chances we've we we got we had reasonable enough chances a couple of decent chances i think certainly the second one felt like we could have put it on the right side of the post i don't think the formation worked terribly badly um yeah let me know in the comments what you think about that was it is is that as much as I can expect out of this side, or, or, or could I have got more if I had played better people in the more appropriate roles? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. I didn't see anything coming out of that game, but then you never know what's going to happen to you. I've seen some weird results with Canada doing quite well against other nations uh, in previous run-throughs of this, so I know it's possible. I just don't know if I'm capable of delivering. Anyway, folks, we're going to come back for I think the second episode. Will the second part will be the second two group games of Morocco and Belgium. We got Morocco at first, so that's one we really need to win, and then we'd have to play Belgium and hope we can pick up something against the Belgian side, which will be challenging. I think. Um, yeah, I think we have to beat Morocco and then expect. Croatia to beat Morocco as well and then depending on how Croatia do against Belgium I, I don't know and it's it there's, there's a possibility I don't think we're going through but it would be awesome to not finish bottom of the group I think that would be a great um, thing to aim for anyway folks if you have enjoyed this episode please hit the like button leave me some tips what what would you have done differently how would you have set the team up differently um, in the comments uh, and I will see you uh, next time. Oh, yeah subscribe as well if you haven't done so already. See you next time. Bye-bye